Hello viewers, this is Wagoda Renal taking you through the story of all level mathematics and this video are going to go through the solutions for all level math part 1 of Juneb 2017. So this video is suitable for students in senior 4. So we shall start with section A question 1. So question 1 says factorize x plus 4 in brackets squared minus x minus 3 in brackets squared. So the first thing to realize is that this is difference of two squares. Now for difference of two squares, what we shall do, we shall factorize it into two brackets, one having difference, another one having the sum of the terms. So for, the, for example, the, for this sum difference, get this term, put it here, get this term, put here, and in between there is a difference. Then also another bracket will have get this term, put it here, get this term, put it here, and in between there is a sum. So another thing to realize that now the squares are not included here. So when you use when you factorize it in this form, in terms of two brackets, one having difference, another one having sum, it means that the squares are not put here. So now after realizing that, next thing is to open brackets. So when I open brackets, this will be here, x plus 4, but this minus is somewhat tricky because this negative by this gives me negative x and this negative by this negative 3 gives me positive 3. So some students forget and they put here minus 3 which is not okay. For some it is straightforward, this is here and this is there. But for difference, you must be careful when you are dealing with the difference, with the bracket for difference. So now that you have done that, next is to collect like terms. When I collect like terms, you realize that this x and this x cancels. So 4 plus 3 gives me 7, which is there. Then this x and this x gives me 2x, which is there. Then three min 4 minus 3 gives me positive 1, which is there. So in the end, I'll come up with 7 in brackets x plus 1. So in that I have factorized what was given. So basically that's what they wanted and now let's see how mass can be awarded. So M1 for difference, M1 for sum and M1 for the product. So this in between here there is a product. Some students confuse it and they put here addition or subtraction that that is not correct. It has to be product. So next is to get the output. So the question was testing factorization and candidates were expected to apply the concept of difference of two squares to factorize the expression and later simplify it. So the question was popular meaning it, it, appear, it appears frequently in the previous past papers but poorly done. So why is it, was it poorly done? It's because most candidates failed to apply the concept of difference of two squares. And many candidates were expanding first. So when you first expand, that means you have not applied the concept of difference of two squares. That means it is not correct. So the advice to teachers is that the concept of difference of two squares should be brought out clearly to students and should include more than one factor. So now shall go that was question one. Now shall go to question two. So question two says solve the simultaneous equation. So these are the simultaneous equations. So there are various methods of solving simultaneous equations. So you choose any one. You can choose matrix method, you can choose elimination, you can choose substitution. So in our case we are going to choose elimination. So how do we do how do we use this method? The first thing to do is to real rearrange so that these constants are on the other side of the equal sign. So when you do that, we shall come up with this this negative seven goes this side become positive seven, which is that. And this positive two will go this side become negative two, which is that. Now after that, what we do, look at this coefficient of x here. Coefficient of x is one, so that's why you put one here. Coefficient of x here is two, that's why you put two here. So what does that mean? It means that we are going to multiply 1 throughout this equation and also 2 will multiply throughout this equation. So when we do that, we are going to come up with this. So for example, 
one throughout this will the, it means that the equation will remain as it was but two multiply throughout this it means that this will become 2x this will become 8y and this will become negative 4 now next is to subtract so when i subtract this and this cancels but negative 3y minus 8y gives me negative 11y then 7 minus negative 4 gives me positive 11 so next is to make y the subject by dividing both sides by negative 11 to come up with y equal to negative 1. So now that I've got y, we can use any of the two equations to come up with the value of x. So if I choose the second equation here and substitute for y, I'll come up with x plus 4 times negative 1. That means that where there was y, I put there negative 1 plus 2 equal to 0. So I think we realize that we have only one unknown, which is x. So next thing to do is to simplify and make x the subject. So x will be equal to positive 2. So basically, that's what they wanted. And now let's see how much can be awarded. So m1 for this subtraction, a1 for the value of y, m1 for substitution, a1 for the value of x. So the question was testing solution of simultaneous equations. It was an open question where candidates were expected to use any method of solving simultaneous equations. Like I said, there are many methods. There's graphical method, substitution method, elimination method, and matrix method. So in this video, what you have used is called elimination method. The question was very popular and very well done. So, very popular means that it appears frequently in the previous papers and also it was well done. And candidates, but however, some candidates miscopied the signs while others failed to rearrange the equations correctly. So, the first thing to do is to rearrange, but as you rearrange, you must be keen so that you don't interchange the signs. Then some of those who used matrix method failed to obtain the correct adjunct matrix. So advice to teachers is that the teachers should emphasize correct copying of signs and correct order of matrix arrangement for matrix multiplication. Now, this matrix has the topic of matrices has also been well discussed in this on this platform. So what you do if you have issues with it, go to the playlist of senior three work in that in that playlist of senior three work there is a full topic on matrices so all the entire matrices using matrix solves and simultaneous equations addition matrix question of matrices forming matrices everything on matrices is there under senior three work so question three says that table below shows mat marks obtained by 34 students in a chemistry test calculate the mean marks so these are the marks and these are the number of students so what you should realize first is that this is grouped data so you have to treat it as grouped data so the first thing to do is to tabulate our results first of all you are going to write these under the class the marks then the number of students will be our frequency. So f denotes frequency, so we are going to rewrite these very values. Let's do that. Now, because they wanted mean, we also have to get the mid mark, which is x. Mid mark, or sometimes we call it class mark. So mid mark or midpoint will be denoted by x. How is it got? We shall say the, uh, the sum divided by 2. So 20 plus 29 over 2 will give me. 24.5. What about 30 plus 39 over 2? It gives me 34.5. 40 plus 49 over 2 gives me 44.5. This plus this over 2 gives me 54.5. And this plus this over 2 gives me 64.5. So now that I've got the values of f and values of x, I have to generate the column of fx. So fx means I multiply f with x. So 3 by this gives me 73.5. This by this gives me 
172.5 this by this gives me 356 and this by this gives me 436 this by this gives me 645 now next is to add up all these values of fx to come up with 1683 so now that I've got the summation of fx and the summation of f I can now go ahead and get my mean mark from the formula that mean mark is equal to summation of fx over summation of f so summation of fx is this value and summation of f is this value so I'll come and substitute and use the calculator to come up with 49.5 as my mean Max. So basically that's what they wanted. Now let's see how max can be awarded. So B1 for the value of F, values of Fx. Another B1 for the sum of Fx. Then M1 for substitution, A1 for output. So the question was testing the topic of statistics and candidates were expected to find the mean of given grouped data the question was very popular and well done very popular means that it appears frequently in the previous past papers and it was also well done however some candidates failed to obtain the correct mid max others failed to correctly multiply the mid mark by the corresponding frequency so so, so you, as you prepare for your examinations you must be taking of that so that in case it comes you don't make the same mistakes advise that teachers should make learners involved in obtaining the data that can be used to calculate the mean and other values like mode and median so learners should also be given adequate practice so still in on this platform there is a full playlist having statistics so both statistics for group data and statistics for ungrouped data so if you're interested in, stati in statistics for group data go under the senior three work and you'll find there that entire topic and also if, you're if you're interested in statistics for ungrouped data you can go under the senior two work and that entire topic of statistics is there for ungrouped data so both are catered for in on this platform so now we shall go to question 4. Question 4 says that given that s star t is equal to 2s squared minus 3t, evaluate 6 star open brackets 5 star 2. So such questions for you to answer them, you, you first work out the one in the brackets. So first of all, we know this is a given relationship between of this, what that star means. So we are going to first work out this bracket. So 5 star 2, what does it mean? It means that in this case, S is 5 and T is 2. So it is 2 times S squared. That is why we push 2 times 5 squared. Then minus 3T, that's why you put minus 3 times 2. Because our T is now replaced with 2. Now next is to simplify and come up with 44 as 5 star 2. Now that I've got 44 here, it implies that now to get the whole of this, it will be 6 star 44. So what does that mean? It means that S is 6 and T is 44. So shall it still substitute the same formula? 2 times X times S squared is the same as 2 times 6 squared minus 3T, which is the same as minus 3 times 44. So next is to simplify and come up with my answer as negative 60. So basically that's what they wanted. Now let's see how marks can be awarded. So M1 for substitution here, A1 for this output, M1 for substitution here, A1 for this output. So the question was testing operations. Candidates were expected to substitute the values into the given expression starting with the values in the bracket. So always note that too, that we start with values in the bracket. 
The question was popular and well done. However, many candidates did not interpret the question correctly, which led to wrong substitution and multiplication. I advise that teachers should guide the learners to understand given expressions before they can have adequate practice on their use. So now we shall go to question 5. Question 5 says that an interior angle of a regular polygon is 162 degrees. Find the sum of its interior angles. So regular means all sides are equal and therefore each in all the, the value of all the interior angles is the same. So the first thing to do is to get the number of sides. So number of sides of an number of sides given by the formula that n is equal to 360 over exterior angle where n is the number of sides therefore but in this case we are given the interior angle what we know that they add up to 180 so interior angle and exterior angle is equal to 180 therefore the exterior angle will be 180 minus 162 which is the interior angle and when I say 180 minus 162 I come up with 18 therefore 360 divided by 18 using a calculator gives me 20. That means that the number of sides of this polygon is 20. So this is a 20 sided polygon, therefore. Now that I know the number of sides, I can come and say that now the interior angle sum is equal to the formula 180 in brackets n minus 2. So when I substitute for n, I'll come up with n 180 in brackets 20 minus 2, therefore. In the end, when I use the calculator, I come up with 3240 degrees, so 3240 degrees as my interior angle sum. So basically, that's what they wanted, and now let's see how mass can be awarded. So M1 for substitution, A1 for output, M1 for substitution, A1 for output. So the question was testing plane geometry. Candidates were expected to use the relation between interior or exterior angle with the number of sides of a regular polygon. I think we have used all those ones. We have used the interior angle, we have used the exterior angle, we have used the number of sides. The candidates were also expected to relate the sum of the interior angles of a regular polygon with the number of sides. Remember, in triangle sum is equal to 180 in brackets n minus 2. So you have to know that relationship. The question was not popular and poor was poorly done. So not popular means that it appears less frequently in the previous principles and poorly done is means that most of the candidates who attended the question, very few got it correct. So the weakness is that candidates failed to obtain the number of sides of the regular polygon and therefore could not determine the angle sum of the interior angles. I advise that teachers should continuously revise topics which are taught in senior one and senior two. So this goes also to candidates preparing for the for their UNEB. Don't forget to revise senior one and senior two work. Some candidates make a mistake and revise only senior three and senior four work but that is not okay that is academic suicide so remember to revise also senior one and senior two work so now we shall go to question six question six says find the values of x and y in this so this is under matrices so we are given three multiplied by this matrix minus two multiplied by this matrix is equal to that matrix so the first thing to do is to is column application so this three multiplies each entry inside this matrix to come up with this and this two multiplies each, each entry inside that matrix to come up with that and this remains as it is since there is no scalar here the next is to subtract so when i subtract this minus this gives me x this minus this gives me y zero minus zero is zero and zero minus zero is zero So you have to know that when you're subtracting, you subtract with a order. So this minus that is that. This goes with this, and this goes with this, and this goes with that. So next is to use the quality of matrices. So if 
these two matrices are equal, it means that this value is equal to this value, and this value is equal to is equal to this value. Therefore, we shall come and say that x is equal to three and y is equal to four. So basically, that's what they wanted. Now let's see how much can be awarded. So M1 for scalar multiplication and M1 for simplifying and A1 for the value of X, another A1 for the value of Y. So the question was testing matrices and candidates were expected to apply scalar multiplication of the corresponding matrices and subtraction of the matrices and come up with the values of X and Y. The question was popular and was well done. Popular means that it appears most frequently in the previous past papers and also it was well done, meaning that of the students who did it, very many got it correct. However, some candidates failed to multiply the matrices using this given scalar. Others failed to correctly subtract the matrices. So you must know scalar matri multiplication of matrices and also subtraction of matrices so still the like i said in this vid in this platform there is a full topic on senior three work about matrices so if you want it go to the section of senior three work and get everything about matrices there so I advise that teachers should give the learners adequate revision on matrices and emphasize and emphasis should be made not to alter the order of matrices in any given operation. For example, if they say matrix A minus B, you shouldn't alter and say that matrix B minus A. So now we shall go to question 7. Question 7 says that solve for x in the inequality. So this is the inequality and they want you to solve for x. So you first rewrite the given inequality as it is. The next is to get the lowest common divisor. So lowest common, common divisor is the LCM of this denominator. So LCM of 2, 3, 6, and 4. So the LCM will be 12. So what we do with that LCM is that we multiply each term by the LCM. Like, so this a half will be multiplied by 12. This will be multiplied by 12. This will be multiplied by 12. And this will be multiplied by 12. So after the reason why we do that is to remove the denominator and remain with only the numerators. So this with this cancels to give you 6, which is that. Then for this one, this 3 with this gives you 4. And that 4 with 2 gives me 8, which is that. And there is a, this x, which is there. For this case, this 6 and this gives me 2, which is there. And this x is there. For this, this 4 with this gives me 3, which is that, and this minus is there. So I think we realize that there is no more fraction now. So next is to rearrange by collecting like terms. So what we are going to do, we are going to bring this 3 this side, and bring this one this side, to come up with 6 plus 3 less than 2x plus 8x. So when I collect like simplify, I come up with this gives me 9, and this gives me... 10x. So next to, to but remember the one they to want to solve for x, so we have shall divide both sides by 10 to re remain with x. So when I divide both sides by 10, I'll come up with 9 over 10 less than x, meaning that x is greater than 9 over 10. So basically, that's what they wanted. Now let's see how much can be awarded. So one is multiplying throughout by the LCD, which is the lowest common divisor. Another one is collecting like terms. Another one is division. Another and lastly, output. So the question was testing solution of linear inequalities. Candidates were expected to solve the inequality, which had fractions, and this required knowledge and use of LCM and collecting like terms. So both. How to get the LCM and how to collect that terms was needed. So the question was popular but poorly done. Why? Because some candidates changed the inequality sign and made it an equation. So 
what you should remember is that when you are solving these inequalities, the inequality sign must remain. What did some students do? They remove this inequality sign and put the unequal sign that is not okay. Others fail to use to use the LCM correctly and some fail to reverse the inequality sign after dividing or multiplying both sides by a negative. So I think you realize why for my case here you realize that I chose to bring this value this side. Why? Because I was trying to bypass the negative because if I bring this one this side it will become negative 8x minus negative minus 2x which gives me negative 10x so the reason why I brought this one this side is to make this a positive so that when I divide I divide by a positive value why because the reason why I do that because some students forget that when you divide by negative value the inequality sign changes so in this case I was trying to bypass that step So some students who didn't do that, they, when they divided by the negative number, they forgot to change the inequality sign. So adverse to teachers is that most candidates failed to deal with fractions. What does that mean? It means that teachers need to give more exercise to be done in this area. Also, emphasis should be laid on reversing the inequality sign at the stage of multiplying or dividing by a negative. So either bypass the negative or you leave it as it is and divide, and remember that when you divide by a negative number the inequality sign changes so in this video what i did i bypassed the negative by putting the x on the other on the right hand side so that the coefficient of x is positive so now shall go to question 8 question 8 says in the right angle triangle abc below AB is 10 centimeters, which is that, and AC is 6 centimeters, which is that. Determine Roman part A, the length BC, so they want this length BC, and part B, the area of triangle ABC. So the first thing to remember is that for a right angle triangle, we have to use Pythagoras theory. So what we need, we know that this is the hypotenuse, therefore, from Pythagoras theory, we shall see that BC will be equal to this hypotenuse minus this one. So AB squared minus AC squared. Therefore, when I substitute, to remove this square, I will have to put a square on both sides to come up with BC being equal to square root of AB, which is 10, minus AC, which is 6. AC squared. So 10 squared is 100, 6 squared is 36. So 100 minus 36 gives me 64. And square root of 64 is 8. So I shall take a positive value which will be 8 centimeters. So that was part A. What about part B? Part B, they want the area of triangle ABC. Remember, area is a half base height. So this will be our base and this will be our height. So the base will be that and height will be 8 which was already calculated here. So when I use the calculator, I'll come up with 24 centimeters squared. So basically, that's what they wanted. Now let's see how much can be awarded. So this M1 for this substitution and A1 for the output, M1 for this substitution, A1 for the output. So the question was testing the application of Pythagoras theorem and candidates were expected to apply Pythagoras theorem to determine the third side of the given right angle triangle and also calculate its area. The question was very popular and well done. However, some candidates failed to apply Pythagoras theorem correctly to determine the length of the required size. So some candidates, instead of saying 10 squared minus 6 squared, they were saying 10 squared plus 6 squared. So, emphasis must be put on which side is the hypotenuse. Advice that teachers should employ a practical approach to the use of Pythagoras theorem in determining the length and area to help the learners to visualize this 
concept. So as teachers, you have to be as creative as possible so that the learners can visualize this concept. So question 9 says that a number which is divisible by 3, know that word divisible by 3, is chosen at random from a set of even numbers between 1 and 20. What is the probability of choosing the number? So first of all, we shall say that let A be the even numbers, be, set of even numbers between zero, between 1 and 20. Therefore, those even numbers will be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So that was set A. Now we shall go to set B, which is a set of numbers divisible by 3 between 1 and 20. So when you list them, there will be 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and 18. Therefore, the required probability will be the number of n intersection B because they said the number is divisible by 3 and also is an even number and also between 1 and 20. Therefore, the intersection will be First of all, what is in common? There is this 6, there is this 12, and there is this 18. So the n intersection, the number of members of A intersection B will be 1, 2, 3, which will be 3 members. That's why you put here 3. Then n A will be the sample space, which will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 9, that is why we put here 9. Therefore, you can choose to reduce or to leave it as 9 over 3. So, you can leave it as 9 over 3 or you reduce to come up with 1 over 3. So, any is okay. So, basically, that's what they wanted. Now, let's see how much can be awarded. So, B1 for set A, B1 for set B. And now, this M1 for you to get this numerator and number of members of A intersection B. And this A1 is for the entire probability. So the question was testing probability. Candidates were expected to list the set of even numbers between 1 and 20 and then identify the numbers which are divisible by 3 from the same space. So as to determine the required probability. So the question was popular but poorly done. Why? Because some candidates failed to interpret the statement between 1 and 20. 20 which led to wrong list of sample space so advice to teachers that teachers should endeavor to clarify to students phrases such as between and or so that they can interpret them correctly so these words are very vital in mathematics so as you prepare for your examinations you must know what they mean So that was question 9. Now we shall go to question 10. So question 10 says the graph below shows the line HK and this image H prime K prime. So this is the line HK and this is the east image H prime K prime. After rotation in the clockwise direction. Use the graph to determine the part A coordinates of the angle of rotation then part B angle of rotation so shall start with part a where they want the coordinates of the center of rotation so for you to get the coordinates the first thing to do is to join so draw it get yourself a ruler and join h to h prime and join k to k prime so when you join h to h prime we shall come up with that line then join k to k prime we shall come up with that line so next thing to do is to draw perpendicular bisectors for both lines for both h h prime and k k prime so let's start with h h prime so to for you to draw a perpendicular bisector you need a pair of compasses and a ruler so you will put your compass on this here and draw an arc so that will be the arc then next i'll put the compass noodle at h prime and i draw that arc 
so i realize that these two axes intersect at this point and this point so what i'm going to do i draw a line through those two points of intersection of the axe so when i do that this is what i'll come up with so that is the perpendicular bisector for h h prime i'll do the same and get the perpendicular bisector for k k prime so what i what will i do i'll put my compass needle at k and draw that arc then without changing the radius of the arc, I'll put the compass to k prime and draw that arc. So next I'll inter I'll draw a line through these two points of intersection that and this. So when I do that, I'll come up with that line. So you realize that they intersect at this point. Therefore, I'll say I'll therefore the center of rotation will be zero zero. So she has stated, but let's also first find out what the angle is. So for you to get the angle of rotation, join this point object to the center of rotation and also join the image to the center of rotation. The next is to, to measure the angle from here to here. So when I do that, to do that I'll use a protractor. So when I use a protractor I'll come up with 90 degrees. So what will I do? I'll come and conclude that the center of rotation is 0, 0 and the angle of rotation is positive 90 degrees. So positive, always remember that, positive 90 degrees. Possibly because it is in the clockwise direction. So basically that's what they wanted. Now let's see how much can be awarded. So M1 for you to draw this perpendicular bisector, another one for you to do the other perpendicular bisector, A1 for stating the center and A1 for stating the angle. So the question was testing the transformation of rotation. Candidates were expected to determine the center and angle of rotation given an object and its corresponding image under a rotation. Candidates were expected to construct, not that word construct means, means that you had to use a pair of compasses and a ruler to construct a pair of mediators of the line joining a point to its corresponding image. So pair of mediators means perpendicular bisectors. So this word mediator shouldn't confuse you. It means perpendicular bisectors. And where these mediators meet is the center of rotation. So the intersection of these of the two, of the two perpendicular bisectors is the center of rotation as we have done. So, and also, so therefore, to find the angle of rotation, candidates were also required to find the angle of rotation. And for you to do that, candidates were to join a point to the center of rotation and also join the corresponding image to the center of rotation, just as we have done. And the angle between these two lines gives the angle of rotation. So, the question was not popular, means that it it appears less frequently in the previous past papers and was poorly done, meaning that of the students who attempted, very few got it correct. So the weakness is that most candidates failed to determine the center of rotation, let alone stating the angle of rotation. Advice to teachers that teachers should always revise topics which are taught in Senior 1 and Senior 2. So that was Section A. Now we shall go to Section B. So remember in Section B, a candidate is expected to attempt only five questions. Remember, Section B has seven questions and each question carries 12 marks. But... When an exam, you have to answer only five questions of those seven. However, for this, because this is the revision time, in this video, you shall answer all the seven questions in section B. So let's start with question 11. So question 11 says, part A, copy and complete the table of values below for y equal to x squared plus 2x minus 15. I'll give it 15 and give it three marks. Now, before we go to part B of this question, let's first copy, let's first complete this 
table so for me i will not copy it again because because this is revision but for you as a student you have to recopy this table and also fill in these missing gaps so for me i'll just fill in in this very question so for this part now this row is for x squared and this row is for y so y means that you add up all these values and this row means that you get the square of the x values so what does that mean it means that to get this value I will have to square 5, negative 5, so negative 5 squared is 25, what does that mean? It means that I'll come and write here 25, and here, to get what is here, it means that I'll add up all these ones to come up with 0. Then negative 4 squared is 16, which is that, then when I add all these 3, I'll come up with negative 7, which is there negative 3 squared is positive 9 then the sum of all these ones is negative 12 negative 1 squared is positive 1 and the sum of all these ones is negative 16 0 squared remains 0 and the sum of all these ones is negative 15 1 squared is positive 1 and the whole of this sum is equal to negative 12 3 squared is positive 9 and the sum of all this is 0. Then 4 squared is positive 16 and the sum of all this is positive 9. So, what, so with that I've already completed the table so before I go to part B let me see how much can be awarded for this. So B1 for all these values then here there are two marks for this row so the first four that is b1 and also these last four that is also b1 so that was part a what about part b so part b says use your Use your completed table to draw the graph of y equal to x squared plus 2x minus 15. Use a scale of 1 cm to represent 1 unit on the x-axis and 1 cm to represent 2 units on the y-axis. Then part C, draw on the same graph the line y equal to 2x minus 14 and hence solve the equation x squared minus 1 equal to 0. So the first thing to do is to draw this graph. So for you to draw the graph, it means that you are going to plot these values. So you plot the values of x with their corresponding values of y. For example, when x is negative 6, y is positive 9. When x is negative 5, y is 0. When x is negative 4, y is negative 7. When x is negative 3, y is negative 12. When x is negative 2, y is that, and so on and so forth. So those are the coordinates you have to plot, and after that you'll join using a freehand but smooth curve. So for you to do that, you'll need a graph paper. So let's first get a graph paper. So we shall go to this solution for part B. The first thing to do is to get a graph paper. So that's my graph paper. And, the f and after getting a graph paper, the first thing to do is to draw the axes and label them. So draw axes, label them, label x-axis as the horizontal, and draw the vertical axis and label it as y-axis. After doing that, next thing is to demarcate and use the scale. So demarcate for the horizontal and remember the scale for the horizontal, then put values for the horizontal. So those are the values, one centimeter representing one unit. So after that, we shall also demarcate for the y-axis. So that's the demarcation for the y-axis. And after demarcating, you have to feed in values, so remember in the vertical axis, it is one centimeter representing two units. Okay, so after that, when that is done, the next thing to do is to plot. So plotting, like I said, 
you are going to plot corresponding values for example and those values are got from this table so you plot this with that this with this this with that negative 3 with that negative 2 with that negative 1 with that negative z sorry 0 with that 1 with this 2 with that this with that and that with that so that is what we are going to plot so let's plot them step by step so you shall now go back to our graph paper and start plotting so you start plotting we shall start with negative six negative six was corresponding with positive nine so we shall put that negative five was corresponding with zero so we shall put it here negative four was corresponding with negative seven which is there negative three was corresponding with negative twelve which is there negative two was corresponding with negative fifteen which is there negative one was corresponding with negative sixteen which is there zero was corresponding with fi negative fifteen which is there one was corresponding with negative twelve which is there two was corresponding with negative seven which is there three was corresponding with zero which is there four was corresponding with positive nine which is there so now that you have plotted all the points the next thing to do is to draw a smooth curve through all these points so the curve must be as smooth as possible so let's do that so the curve has to be drawn with freehand and as smooth as possible and after that we have to label our curve So that is part B where they wanted you to draw a quad graph. But they also wanted you to draw on the same graph the line. Now that is part now we are on part C to draw the on the same graph the line y equal to 2x minus 14 and hence solve the equation x squared minus 1 equal to 0. So the first thing to do is because this is the line, we shall get any two points on that line. So you shall come and say that for part C, we shall first tabulate any two points, so x, and that is the value of y, which is 2x minus 14. Therefore, when x is 0, y will be negative 14, and when x is 7, y will be 0. So what we are going to do, we are going to plot 0, negative 14, and also 7, 0. So let's start with 0, negative 14, which is there then also plot 0 7 which is there so we have to draw a straight line through those two points so here we're going to use the ruler so let's do that and now that we have to label our line y equal to 2x minus 14. the next they wanted you to solve the equation so first of all you have to find out when i subtract this line from this curve what do i remain with so this is the curve and this is the line so when i subtract realize that you remain with the equation which they want you to solve what does that mean it means that the points of intersection of the line and the curve are the roots of of the equation they want so this is the point of intersection and also this is the point of intersection we have to read off the x values so what we are going to do shall get our ruler and draw a dotted line to meet the a vertical line to meet the x-axis and rid of that value and that will be negative one also at this point draw a vertical line to meet the horizontal axis to meet the x-axis and rid of that line that value which is positive one so what does that mean it means that now the roots are x equal to negative one and x equal to positive one so basically that's what they wanted now let's see how much can be awarded so b1 for both axes and m1 for the correct scale correct scale two units for one represent one centimeter representing two units for vertical and one centimeter represent, representing one unit for vertical 
then M1 for plotting all points correctly for the curve and M1 for a reasonable smooth curve passing through all the points M1 for table values for two for y equal to 2x minus 14 M1 for drawing the line y equal to 2x minus 14 M1 for the subtraction attempting to find the required equation A1 for the first root and another A1 for the second root so the question was testing graphical solution of quadratic equations candidates were expected to complete the given table values and use the table to draw a curve they were also expected to draw a line of which intersects the curve in order to find the solution of a given new quadratic equation the question was very popular and was well done however some candidates failed to complete the table correctly which led to plotting wrong points and some failed to use the given scale a few candidates could not show how the new quadratic equation was being solved using the original equation and the line drawn so they forgot to subtract the two the equa the line from the equation advise that teachers should emphasize more graphical work and the correct use of scales given in the question teachers should also show the candidates how to relate equation of the new quadratic equation being solved with the line drawn so that was question 11 now we shall go to question 12 of question 12 says four schools participated in a football tournament which was played in two rounds the results were given below so first round bakulu ss won one one drew three and lost two matches dodo ss won two drew two and lost two matches kaunga ss won three drew two and lost one match oronga ss won none drew two and lost four matches so that was the first round what about the second round so for the second round bakulu ss won one drew two and lost three matches dodo ss won two drew one and lost three matches kaunga ss won two drew three and lost one match Oronga SS won one, drew four, and lost three, lost one match. So the question says, Part A, write down a four by three matrix, not that word, four by three matrix, which shows the performance of the schools in Roman one, each of the two rounds, Roman two, both rounds. Then part B, three points are awarded for a win, one point for a draw, and no point for a loss. Roman 1, write down a 3 by 1 matrix to represent the award of points. Then Roman 2, use matrix multiplication, using matrix multiplication, determine which school won the tournament. So we shall start with a Roman one. So a Roman one performance for the first round is that, and for the second round, that is the matrix. So how are these matrix matrices got? So these matrices are got from the given information. Remember, they told us, for example, for the first round we have for Baluku for ba Bakulu SS we have one three two. So that is where this one three two is coming from. Then for the next school, it was 2, 2, 2. That is where this 2, 2, 2 is coming from. Then the third school was 3, 2, 1. That is where this 3, 2, 1 is coming from. Then the other one is 9, which is 0, 2, 4. So that is where this 0, 2, 4 is coming from. So that was for the first round. What about for the second round? Second round is still the same. The first school, it was 1, 2, three 
So here it is one, two, three. Then the next school it was two, one, three. That is where this two, one, three is coming from. Then the third school it was two, three, one. So that is where two, three, one is coming from. And lastly, one, four, one. That is where this one, four, one is coming from. So basically, that's what they wanted in Roman one. Then Roman two, they wanted you to get the matrix for both rounds. So what does that mean? It means that you are going to add the two matrices. So add this to this to get the final matrix. So when I add, for example, one plus, so if I add one plus one, I'll come up with two. Three plus two will come up with five. Two plus three will come up with five. Then for the second row, two plus two is four. Two plus one is three. Two plus three is five. Then for the third row, three plus two is five. Two plus three is five. One plus one is two. Then for the last row, zero plus one is one. Two plus four is six. Four plus one is five. So basically, that's what they wanted in part A. Now let's see how mass can be awarded. So B1 for the correct order of 4 by 3. Then another B1 for the correct entries. B1 for the correct order of 4 by 3. 4 by 3. Then another B1 for the correct entries. Here M1 for addition. Then B1 for the correct order and B1 for the correct entries at the output. So that was part A. Part B, they say that three points are given to win, one point for a draw and zero for a loss. Then they wanted you to draw a three, to make to write down a three by one matrix. Three by one means that three rows and one column. Then they also want you to use matrix multiplication to determine which school won the tournament. So 3 by 1 matrix will be that 3 points for a win, 1 point for a draw, 0 for a loss. So Roman 2, they want you to use matrix multiplication. So matrix multiplication shall come and multiply. Remember, we have to multiply with the correct order. Correct order means that, for example, we multiply row by column, meaning that the number of columns for the first matrix must be equal to the number of rows for the second matrix. If you look at this, these are three columns for the first matrix and these are three rows for the second matrix, meaning this is the correct order. So to multiply, multiply row by column. So two by three is six. Five by one is five. Five by zero is zero. So that's where this is coming from. Then for the second row shall be four by three is 12. 3 by 1 is 3, and 5 by 0 is 0. Then for the third row, 5 by 3 is 15, 5 by 1 is 5, and 2 by 0 is 0. Then lastly, 1 by 3 is 3, 6 by 1 is 6, 5 by 0 is 0. So by that we have multiply, next is to add. So this plus this plus this gives me 11. This plus this plus this gives me 15. This plus this plus this gives me 20. This plus this plus this gives me 9. So the team which one is the one which has the highest points. So if you look at this, it is this. Remember, it is this one with 20. So which team is this? We have to look at the third. So... The third school is on which one? So we shall go back to the question and look for the third school. So the third school was one, two, three. So the third school was Kaunga SS. So that's why we, here we said that it is Kaunga SS which won the tournament. So basically that's what they wanted. And now let's see how much can be awarded.
So M1 with correct order and correct entries, M1 with correct order matrix multiplication, M1 for multiplying and A1 for output, B1 for stating the winner. So the question was testing matrices. Candidates were expected to write two matrices of order 4x3 using the given information and then adding the two matrices. Candidates were also expected to write down a column matrix of 3x1 representing the award of points. Using matrix multiplication, candidates were then required to determine which school won the tournament. The question was very popular and well done. However, candidates had weaknesses in writing down the matrices of the given order. Some used words instead of figures. Addition and multiplication of matrices was also a problem to some candidates. So these are the areas you should be keen of as you are preparing for your Geneb. So then in case it comes back, you get your marks without missing any. So advice to teachers that teachers should emphasize the order of matrix of a matrix which is always stated by giving the number of rows followed by the number of columns and not vice versa. So if you interchange it will be wrong. So now we shall go to question 13. So question 13 part A says make capital D the subject of the expression. So is the expression L equal to square root of 3B over T minus D. Then hence find the value of D when B is equal to 540, L is equal to 18, and T is equal to 17. Then part B says that I'm about five circuits of washing powder and a tube of toothpaste at shillings 70, 1700 in January. Then in the February, she bought 15 circuits of washing powder and two tubes of toothpaste at shillings 4400. What was the price of each item during the two months? So we'll start with part A. So what we are given is that L is equal to square root of 3B over T minus D. So the first thing to do is to put square on to square both sides so that we get L squared equal to 3B over T minus D. So I think we we'll see that this square root goes with a square and this side the, it becomes L squared. So that is squaring both sides. Then next is to cross multiply. So when I cross multiply, the whole of this will go this side to become L squared in brackets. So this has to be in brackets because there are two terms. So in brackets, T minus D equal to 3D. But remember, they want you to make capital D the subject. So the next step is to open the brackets. So when I open brackets, I'll come up with L squared T minus L squared D. So my main aim is to make D the subject. So leave D on one side. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to rearrange such that this comes this side and this one goes this side. So when this 3B goes this side, it was positive, so it become negative. That's why there's a minus here. Then this one, L squared D, here it was a negative, so when it goes this side, it becomes a positive. That's why here there is a positive L squared D. Now next is to divide both sides by L squared so that I remain with only D on this side. So when I divide both sides by L squared, I'll come up with that. So that means that D is equal to L squared T minus 3B, everything divided by L squared. So that's what they wanted now, but they also say that they also ask for the hence part. For example, if you look at this. So after making D the subject, they also say that find the value of D when B is equal to 540, L is equal to 18, and T is equal to 17. So what we are going to do, we are going to substitute for B, L, and T. So when I substitute for that, I will come up with this. So this L is 18, T is 17, B is 540. 
So let's use the calculator. So this multiplied by this gives me 5,508. This multiplied by this gives me 1,620. 18 squared is 324. Then when I simplify further, this minus this gives me 3,888 over 324. So when I use the calculator, I'll come up with D being equal to 12. So basically, that's what's part A. Now let's see how much can be awarded. So M14 squaring both sides. Another M14 cross multiplying. M14 opening brackets and A1 for making D the subject. Then the, for the hence part, M1 for substitution and A1 for the output. So now we shall go to part B. So part B. Habi says that I'm about five circuits of washing powder and a tube of toothpaste at shillings seven one thousand seven hundred that is in January. So then in February it was fifteen circuits and two tubes of toothpaste at shillings four thousand four hundred. So we shall get two simultaneous equations. So you come and say that let X be the price of a circuit of washing powder and Y be the price of a tube of toothpaste. Therefore, in January, we shall say that 5X plus Y is equal to 1,700. What about in February? So February, it will be 15X plus 2Y equal to 4,400. So these are two equations and we have to solve them simultaneously. So what we to solve them simultaneously, we shall put, we shall first write these equations as they are. This is equation one here, this is equation two here. Then what we are going to do, look at the quotient of x. So this quotient goes this side, we make like a cross multiplication, crossing. Then this 15 goes this side. So that's why there is 15 here and that's why there is 5 here. So what does that 15 and 5 do? So this 15 means we are going to multiply throughout all these Equation 1 by 15, and um, this 5 means we are going to multiply through all this equation 2 by 5. So when you do that, this is what we are going to get. For example, 15 by 5 gives you 75. 15 by y gives you 15y. 15 by 1,700 gives you 25,500. Then here, 5 by 15 gives you 75x. 5 by 2 by 2 gives 10. 5 by 4,500 gives you 22,000. So next is to subtract these two equations. So 75 minus 75 gives 0. 15 minus 10 gives you 5, which is give, which gives you 5y. 25,500 minus 22,000 gives you 3,500. So next is divide both sides by 5 to come up with y equal to 700. So now that, that means that the price of a tube of toothpaste is shilling 700. So now that we have got the value of y, we shall substitute y with either equation 1 or equation 2 to get the value of x. So if I substitute in equation 1, I'll come and put y here. So I'll substitute to come up with 5x plus 700 is equal to 1700. So when I collect like terms, take this one, this side become 1,000. So 5x will be equal to 1,000. So next is to divide both sides by 5 to come up with x being equal to 200. So what does that mean? It means that the price of a circuit of washing powder is shillings 200. So basically, that's what they wanted. Now let's see how much can be awarded. So B1 for equation 1, B1 for equation 2, M1 for subtraction, A1 for the value of Y. M1 for this substitution, so this was supposed to be substitution, and A1 for the value of X.
So in part A, the question was testing changing a letter to be the subject or in the given formula. In part B, the question was testing formation and solution of simultaneous equations. Candidates were expected to make let the letter D to be the subject of the formula by getting rid of the square root sign by squaring both sides. Candidates were also expected to form a pair of simultaneous equations and then solve it. The, quest the question was popular and was well done. However, in part A, many candidates failed to deal with the square root sign. And in part B, some candidates failed to form the required pair of simultaneous equations, let alone solving the equations. So I advise that teachers should give the learners enough exposure to change on change on subject in a given formula as well as on formation and solution of simultaneous equations. So it's not a must that they will always give you this they will always state for you that simultaneous equations sometimes they can give you information in what problem then then you are the one to form the simultaneous equations and also to solve them. So that was question 13. Now shall I go to question 14. Question 14 says using a ruler and a pair of compasses only part A construct a triangle ABC where angle ABC is equal to 75 degrees AB length is equal to 9.3 centimeters BC length is equal to 8.7 centimeters that is part A part B measure the length of SC and the angle SCB part C Roman 1 draw an inscribed circle in the, in the triangle ABC and Roman 2 find the radius of the circle so such this question is on the construction and the first thing to do is to make a sketch of what is given. So first of all you know that AB is 9.3 centimeters, BC is 8.7 centimeters and angle ABC is 75 degrees. So let's first sketch that information. So first of all, we shall know that AB is 9.3 centimeters. What about ABC is 75 degrees and BC is 8.7 centimeters. So that gives us our triangle. But they also told us in part C to draw an inscribed circle in the triangle ABC. So inscribed meaning that it touches the size of the triangle so that is what they want us to draw so that was the sketch now we have to draw after drawing the sketch we can now draw our actuate diagram so for the actuate diagram remember you need a ruler and a pair of compasses so the first thing to do is to draw a horizontal line which is our AB, on which ab will lies then we can we shall mark one point to become our point b then using a pair of compasses we shall put our compass needle here and the radius of the side that, and the radius of the compass will be 9.3 centimeters after that we shall draw an arc there and that will be point a so that means that line a b is equal to 9.3 centimeters so that is now AB. Next thing to do is to measure angle 75. Remember, angle 75 to construct it, you have to construct 90 degrees, 60 degrees, and bisect that angle between 90 and 60. So how do they? How do you do that? So let's see how it's done. First of all, you put a compass needle at that point, then draw that arc. To cut the horizontal line at both sides this point and this point after that you put your compass needle here without changing the radius of the compass needle you draw that arc so this that means the line joint from this point to this point will be our 60 degrees 
but you also need to draw an angle of 90 degrees so what do you do for you to do that make your increase adjust the compass radius to be bigger than this so that you draw another arc there now without changing the new radius you put your compass at this point and draw another arc so that they intersect so next is to join this point and point B and that point to draw an angle of 90. So when you join that will be our angle of 90 degrees. So what we are going to do, we need to bisect these two angles, this point and this point. So we have to bisect that because from here T it is 60. So we have to bisect that. So for you to bisect what you are going to do, put your compass at this point of intersection and draw an arc which is that. Now that ch without changing the radius of the arc, you are going to put your compass in the needle at this other point and draw another arc so that they intersect. The next is to draw a line through point B and also this intersection of these two arcs. So when you do that, this is what you are going to come up with. So with that, you have succeeded to draw our an angle of 75 degrees. Now that you have drawn an angle of 75 degrees, next is to measure off the length of 8.7 centimeters. So what we are going to do, we shall use the compass, measure off a radius of 8.7 centimeters. Of that, we shall put a compass needle at point B and draw an arc along this line. So that will be our point C, which is here. The next is to join point A to point C to make our triangle. So before that, we are going to thicken this line BC. So well, let's thicken the line BC, which will be 8.7 centimeters. So after that, we are going to draw a thick line from A to C. Thick means that it should be visible. So that is our point. So in this case, I'm using a blue line. So that is our triangle A, B, C. So I've started in, drawing, in answering part A. But rem remember, they also to told us to measure a certain length. So we shall come here and say that length SC, we're using a divider. So from this point to this point, that length will be 11. So the allowance is plus or minus 0 0.1 centimeters. They also wanted the angle SCB. So angle SCB. And that is 50 degrees and the allowance of plus or minus 1 degree. So that was part B. Part C, they wanted us to inscribe a circle. So for you to inscribe a circle, you have to bisect any two angles. So if I bisect, I can choose to bisect this angle A. So what do I do? I'll put my compass needle here and, may, and draw an arc to touch both sides AC and AB. Then next I'll put a compass needle here, adjust the radius of the compass and draw that arc. After that, without changing the radius of the compass needle, I'll radius of the compass, I'll put the compass needle here and draw another arc so that they intersect. So the intersect at that point. So what I'm going to do, I'll draw a line through this point and point A, and that will be the angle bisector at A. So let me let's do that. Okay, remember we bisect any two angles. So next I'll put I'll, I'll, I'll put my compass needle here. Remember, this was already an arc touching both sides BC and AB. Therefore, I'll put the compass needle here, adjust the radius of the compass, and draw that arc. Then, after that, I'll put the compass needle at this point, still maintaining the radius of the compass, I'll draw another arc. So, I think I realize that the intersection at that point, so this point up to here. I'll use the ruler to, draw, to join those two points and that would be my angle bisector. So with those two angle bisectors, the, their point of intersection is what we call the, is, will become our center of the circle. So we have got the center, but we don't know the radius yet. So how do they get the radius? For you to get the radius of the circle to inscribe, you have to first drop a perpendicular from the center. So I'll put my compass here, 
and measure and draw that arc to touch two sides at along the horizontal line of a B. Then from there, I'll put my compass node at this point and draw another arc. Then maintaining the radius of this compass, I'll put the compass node here and draw that arc. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to join this center of the circle to this center with this point of intersection. So when I do that, this is what I'll come up with. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that the distance from here up to this point is what we call the radius of the circle. So I'll, I'll put my compass needle here and measure off this as my radius along with the compass and then I'll draw that circle and that will be the inscribed circle. I think you realize that it will touch all the sides. Then I'll also have to state the radius of the circle. So radius will be 2.7 and the allowance is plus or minus 0 0.1 centimeters. So basically that's what they wanted. Now let's see how mass can be awarded. So B1 for the correct sketch, then M1 for A B for drawing for constructing A B, M1 for constructing B C, M1 for there are these three angles. There's an angle of 90, an angle of 60, and an angle of 75. So this one, an angle of 90, that is M1. An angle of 60, that is M2. And an angle of 75, that is M, another M. Then here, M1 for bisector. So bisecting any two angles. So M1 for bisecting angle A. Another M1 for bisecting angle B. Then M1 for dropping a perpendicular. This point of dropping a perpendicular is very, very vital in inscribing. Then A1 for the correct circle, A1 for the angle, SCB, and A1 for the radius. So yeah, I missed another point for measuring length SC. So the question was testing geometrical construction of, uh, of triangles and an inscribed circle. Candidates were expected to construct a triangle with two given sides bounding an angle of 75 degrees and then an inscribed circle. The question was very popular and was well done. However, some candidates did not know how to construct an angle of 75 degrees. So, hope you have learned that. Many candidates could not drop a perpendicular from the point of intersection of the angle bisector. So, always remember that when you are inscribing an, a circle, you have to drop a perpendicular. Others constructed a circ circumscribing circle instead. So, Others drew a circle which was passing through the vertices, which is not okay. So I advise that teachers should use a variety of textbooks while teaching this topic and they should not ignore the concept taught in primary schools. Emphasis should be placed on the process and steps involved in the construction of an inscribed circle. So this point is very vital because most students get the radius of the circle by trial and error method, which is not okay. So you have to drop a perpendicular. So that was question 14. Now we shall go to question 15. So question 15 says, a cupboard has five white cups and three black cups. Two cups are picked from the cupboard one after the other without replacement. Part A. Draw a tree diagram to represent the given information. Part B. Calculate the probability of picking Roman 1, one white cup and one black cup. Roman 2, two cups of the same color. 
and Roman 3 at least one white cup. So we shall now go to part A. So for part A, we have to first draw our tree diagram. So we have to first sketch uh, uh, what is contained, and that is five white and three black cups. Therefore, the tree diagram we shall draw two branches because there are two colors, one white and so this W1 means that the first picking is white cup and B1 means that the first picking is a black cup. But remember the picking was done twice and without replacement so we shall have to draw another branch. So W2 means that the sec second picking here is white, second picking is black and here second picking is white, second picking is black. So now that drawing that next is to show the probabilities. So here the probability of picking white it means that you have to count here there are five but the total is eight meaning here it will be five over eight and here it will be three over eight which is there. Now the, here it means that after picking white you again pick white meaning that it reduced white have reduced white cups have reduced. And also the total has reduced by 1. So 5 minus 1 is 4. 8 minus 1 is 7. That's why you have 4 over 7. Then here 1 minus 4 over 7 will give you 3 over 7. For this case here, it means that 3 minus 1 is 2. 8 minus 1 is 7. So that's why there is 2 over 7. Then 1 minus 2 over 7 will come up with 5 over 7. So we have filled our tree diagram and next is to answer the questions that follow. So Roman 1, they wanted the probability that 1 is white and 1 is black, meaning if you pick white here first, the next will have to be black. And if you pick black first, the next has to be white. That's why there is W1 and B2 meaning first two is white, second is black. B1, W2 means that first is black, second is white. So the probabilities we have to follow, W1 is this, 5 over 8, which is there. Then after W1, you come, the next is black, so black is here. That is why there is 5 over 8 times 3 over 7. Then for this, there is B1, which is here, that's why you put it here, followed by W2, which is here, that's what we put here. So that's why you get 3 over 8 multiplied by 5 over 7. So next when I apply this, I'll come up with 15 over 56. And when I apply this, I'll come up with 15 over 56. So when I add the two same LCM, so numerator, add the numerator, I'll come up with 30. LCM is 56. So I can either stop at this step or I reduce further by dividing both sides by, the, by 2 to come up with 15 over 28. So before we go to the next slide, let's see how much can be awarded for this slide. So B1 for this first picking and this one for this, this one for that, this one for this, this one for that. Remember this B1 was for both this and that. Then M1 for substitution and A1 for output. So this output put can be also be given at that point. So Roman 2 they wanted same color. So same color means that if the first one is white, the next will also be white. Second is black, the next will also be black. So we shall come back to our tree diagram. So they said white, white meaning 5 over 8 times 4 over 7. Then black, black means 3 over 8 times 2 over 7. So we shall come here and do that. Substitute for that. So 5 over 8, 4 over 7, 3 over 8, 2 over 7. So this one will give me this and this will give me that. When I add the 2... I'll come up with 26 over 56. And when I divide both up and down by 2, I'll come up with 13 over 28. Then now shall go to Roman 3 where they said at least one white. So at least one white, it means one or more. So it means that you can pick two white or one white. So 
two white means w1 w2 one white means w1 b2 and b1 w2 so w both white is already here so the same word is here is what we shall put here but here w1 b2 we shall have to go back to the tree diagram so w1 b2 is 5 over 8 times 3 over 7 then b1 w2 is 3 over 8 times 5 over 7 so we shall come back that is why here there is 5 over 8 times 3 over 7 and here there is 3 over 8 times 5 over 7. So next is simplify. This gives me that, this gives me that, this gives me this. Then when I add all of them, I'll come up with this. So I can, like I said, you can either choose to reduce. So if I divide both sides up and down by 2, I'll come up with 25 over 28. So I can either write 50 over 56 or I write 25 over 20. Eight. So basically, that's what they wanted, and now let's see how mass can be awarded. So M1 for this substitution, and A1 for the output. So it can also be given at that point. Here, M1 for substitution, M1 for simplifying, A1 for the output. So it can also be given at that point. So the question was testing the concept of probability. Candidates were expected to draw a probability tree diagram for the given data and use it to calculate the probabilities of the required events given. The question was not popular and was poorly done. Not popular means that it rarely appears in the previous past papers and poorly done means that of those who attempted the question very few got it correct so the reason is that many candidates failed to draw the probability tree diagram and a few did not include the expected probability on each branch some candidates failed to interpret the question properly so you have to know that is with replacement or without replacement I advise that teachers should set revision questions requiring the drawing and use of probability tree diagrams. The language used in probability should be brought out clearly. So that was question 15. Now we shall go to question 16. So question 16 says a triangle whose vertices are P, Q, and R is mapped onto a triangle whose vertices are p prime that q prime that r prime that by a matrix of transformation three negative one four negative one the triangle p prime q prime r prime is mapped onto triangle p double prime q double prime r double prime by a matrix of transformation two zero zero two find part a the coordinates of p double prime q double prime and r double prime part b the single matrix of transformation so single matrix of transformation which would map p double prime q double prime r double prime back onto p q r then part C, the coordinates of P, Q, and R. So first of all, we are given the image of this object P, Q, R, and also the matrix of transformation. And also the image of P prime, Q prime, R prime is P double prime, tube double prime, and R double prime. So what does that mean? It means that to get this P double prime, Q double prime, R double prime, you had to multiply the coordinates of P prime, Q prime, R prime by this transformation matrix of 2, 0, 0, 2. So let's do that. So, this is the transformation matrix and these are the coordinates. 
P prime, Chu prime, R prime. So when I apply row by column, I'll come up with that. Then row by column, I'll come up with that. That is for P double prime to get P double prime. Then to get Chu double prime, this by this, I'll come up with this. And also this by this, I'll come up with that. Then to get R double prime, it will be this by this to come up with that and this by this to come up with that. So in the end I'll come up with 0, 2, 10, 14 and 0, 4. Therefore the coordinates of P double prime is 0, 2 and the coordinates of Chu double prime is 10, 14 and the coordinates of R double prime is 0, 4. So now we shall go to part B. So now part B, they wanted a single matrix of transformation which would map P Chu, P prime, Chu prime, R prime back onto the object which is P Chu R. So remember we are given two transformation matrices so we have to combine them so let the first one be A and the second one be B. So the first one is 3, negative 1, 4, negative 1 and the second one is 2, 0, 0, 2. Therefore, BA will be the order matters. So the order matters start with the last one followed by the first one. So when I apply this by this, I'll come up with that. So this by this, I'll come up with this value. So how is it got? So 2 by 3 is 6. Then 0 by 4 is 0. So 6 plus 0 is 6, which is there. Then this by this, I'll come up with this. For example, 2 by negative 1 is negative 2. Then 0 by negative 1 is 0. So negative 2 plus 0 is negative 2. Then for this side, this by this gives me that. And this by this gives me that. So after getting BA, next is also get the is determinant. So remember, we want to get its inverse. So is determinant will be major diagonal, which is that, minus minor diagonal, which is that. So when I separate the two, I come up with positive four. Therefore, the single matrix is equal to the inverse of BA, which is equal to 1 over determinant multiplied by the adjoint. So, adjoint means you interchange the entries in the major diagonal. For example, this negative 2 will go this side and this positive 6 will go this side. But for the minor diagonal, you change the signs. For example, this was negative 2, it becomes positive 2. Positive 8 becomes negative 8. Then when I apply this a quarter by each entry inside this matrix, I'll come up with negative 0 0.5, 0 0.5, negative 2, 1.5. So basically, that's what they wanted in part A and part B. Now let's see how much can be awarded before you go to part C. So M14, correct order, correct multiply, multiplying and output. So this one is for the correct order, starting with the matrix of transformation followed by the coordinate. And this one is for multiplying the two, and this one is for the output. Then this one is for stating the coordinates. Then B1 for matrix BA, B1 for this determinant, M1 for multiplying to get the inverse, and A1 for the output. So that was part B. Part C, they want coordinates of P, Q, R. So the good thing is that we have got a matrix which maps the final image back onto the original object. So what we are going to do, we are going to use that very matrix and the final image. So these are the coordinates of P, 
double prime, chu double prime, and r double prime. And this is the matrix single matrix of transformation which will map the final image back onto the original object. So when I'm apply, I'll come up. So this with this will give me that. Then this with this will give me that. Sorry. I've said this with this will give me this and this with this will give me that. Then this with this, I'll do the same for two and also for R to come up with these values. The next is to simplify to come up with two, three, two, one, and two, six. Therefore, the coordinates of P are two, three, coordinates of two are two, one, and coordinates of R are two, six. So basically, that's what they wanted. Now let's see how much can be awarded. So M1 for multiplying and B1 for output, A1 for connect P, A1 for connect R, A1 for connect sorry, Q and R. So the question was testing the topic of matrices and transformation. Candidates were required to find the coordinates of the images of given points after undergoing a transformation described by a given matrix. Candidates were also expected to find a single matrix representing two successive matrix transformations. The question was popular but poorly done. Why? Because some candidates failed to pre-multiply the object position vectors by the given matrix transformation so as to obtain the image position of image position vectors which is later translated to coordinates many candidates failed to use the correct order of matrix multiplication so it has to be transformation followed by the ob the position vector so advice to teachers is that teachers should emphasize that the first matrix is always pre-multiplied by the second matrix of transformation when obtaining the single matrix representing two successive matrices. I think that's what I say that you have to begin with the last one followed by the first one. So say. If the last one is B and the first one is A, so it has to be B A. If you use A B, that will not be okay. So now we shall go to question 17. So question 17 says, an investor wants to buy two types of generators A and B. Generator A needs two meters squared of space, and B needs three meters squared of space. The available space is only 6 meters squared. The cost of A is 2,000 pounds and that of B is 10,000 pounds. The investor has 80,000 pounds to be spent. If X and Y represent the number of generators of type A and type B respectively, but a write down four inequalities from the information given. Then part B, represent the four inequalities on the same axis. And part C, find the greatest number of generators of both types A and B that the investor can buy using the minimum amount of money. So, shall start by writing the inequalities. So, the first inequality is 3x plus 3y is less or equal to 60. So, where is that one coming from? So, it is coming from this because we are given this total and we have this for A and this for B. Remember, x was for type A and y was for type b so 2x plus 3y must be less or equal to this so it must not exceed this space which is available
Then the next inequality is 2000x plus 10,000y is less or equal to 80,000. So where is that coming from? So here for type A it is 2000 and for type B it is 10,000 and the total is 80,000. Therefore 2000x plus 10,000y is less or equal to this. The next is logic because they cannot have n a negative. So the negative generators are not there. So it is either none or some. That is why here we have x is greater than or equal to 0. So it's either 0 or there, is, there are some generators of type A. Similarly also for type B, there are either 0 generators or some number of generators. That's why we have, we have to put these two. So the last two are the last two inequalities come from something like logic. So that was part A. Part B, they wanted us to show that these inequalities on our graph. So what we are going to do, before we draw, we will show them on the graph, the first thing to do is to tabulate. So tabulating is what makes simplifies the graph work. So what is included in this table? So the first column will be for region. Now region, we put these very inequalities as they are. The order doesn't matter. It is up to you to choose what to start with and what to end with as long as all of them are in that column. Then the second column is for what we call the borderlines. So borderlines means these inequalities are replaced with equal signs. So when you do that, this is what we are going to come up with. Okay, so next is to the next column it will have coordinates. So those are the coordinates. Remember a straight line, as long as you have only two coordinates, you can draw that straight line. So what we are going to do in this column, we shall put there the coordinates which will help us to draw the lines. But we put the ones for which have for complicated lines. For example, the one for x equal to 0, it is already known that is the y axis, and the one for y equal to 0, it is already known that it's for the x axis. Therefore, these ones we don't need the coordinates, but for these other two we need. So for this one, we shall ask ourselves when x is 0, what is y? So when x is 0, we remain with 3y equal to 60. Therefore, when I divide both sides by 3, I come up with y equal to 20. That's why you have this coordinate of 0, 20. What about when y is equal to 0? It implies that 2x is equal to 60, meaning that x is equal to 30. That's why we have here 30, 0. Then for this other line, when x is 0, it implies that 10y is equal to 80. Therefore, y is equal to 8. That's why we have this coordinate of 0, 8. Then when y is equal to 0, we have 2x is equal to 80, meaning that the x is equal to 40. That's why here we have 40 and 0. So those are the coordinates which will help us to draw the lines. But you also need to another column which will help us to realize the region to shade and the region not to shade. Usually we shade the unwanted region. So for this one, it is clear and this one, but for these other two, you have to test. So how do we test? We test using 0, 0. So for example, if I use 0, 0, it implies that I'll come here and put 0 and put here 0 where there is and the where there is y. When I do that, I'll, I'll get 0 is less or equal to 60. So I ask myself, is it true that 0 is less or equal to 60 or it is not? In this case, it is true. That is why you see here the word true. We shall see how this word true helps us to shade. The next, also the next, we shall use 0, 0. So put 0 and 0 here, we shall get 0 is less or equal to 80 and this is also true. So we shall see how these words, true or false, are helpful in our shading of the unwanted region. So now that you have finished, 
completing the table let's go and draw our graph so first you need to have a graph paper so that's my graph paper next you have to draw the axis horizontal axis and y axis the next is to demarcate and also put values so demarcate horizontally and put values also horizontally then also do the same for the vertical demarcate vertically okay and also put values vertical for the vertical scale and uh, vertical axis Okay, after doing that, the next thing to do is to plot. So, what do we plot? What you are going to plot are these points. So, for example, if I want to plot this line, I'll use, I'll plot 0, 20 and 20, 30. So, I'll come here and plot 0 20 which is there and also 20 and also 30 0 which is there so i'll have to join using a ruler from here up through those two points so let's do that using a ruler i'll draw that and also label when you're labeling you don't label the border lines you don't label the inequalities but you don't label the regions what you label is what you call the border line that is why here there is an equal sign always not that you are when you are labeling you label the border line so next we are going to plot 0 8 and 40 0 so this is 0 8 and there's also 40 zero which is here so you have to join a dry line through those two points it has to be a straight line so let's do that after drawing you remember to label using the border line okay so now you have labeled drawn all the lines because remember we said the y-axis is our x equal to zero and the horizontal axis is our y equal to zero so the remaining two lines are these ones now next is to shade now to shade if you look at this inequality x greater than or equal to zero means that the wanted values are the positive values of x meaning the negative values of x are unwanted similarly for the y greater than or equal to zero means that the wanted values are the positive values of y meaning the negative values are unwanted so shall come here and shade the negative values of x so negative values of x are these ones so we shall shade that and also the negative values of y are these ones so we shall shade that okay so after that we need to shade these other two lines so for these other two lines that's where this word of true or false is helpful for example for this line 2x plus 3y equal to 60 the point zero zero was true meaning that where you got that point is the wanted region for example when we come back here this is the borderline of interest and the point zero zero is here meaning that this is the wanted region therefore we have to shade this as the and this will be the unwanted region and that's what we are going to shade so shall come and shade that okay what about this other point? This other point also, it gave us true, as you can see it here. It gave us true, meaning that we shall come here. This is our zero, 00, meaning this is the wanted region, and this will be the unwanted region. So that's what we are going to shade. So we shall do that and shade. So we have finished showing all the inequalities, and next is to go to the next part. So that was part B. Now let's go to part C.
So parts to the side, find the greatest number of generators of both types A and B that are that the investor can buy using the minimum amount of money. So they want the greatest number of generators of both type A and type B for the amount of money used to be minimum. So before we do that, let's first award marks for these slides. So for this one, B1 will be for equation 1, this first equation, this for the second equation, this for the third, and this for the fourth. Okay, that was the slide. Now for this one, we have to look for what we call the points, the, those, the points which will make the amount minimum. So what we do, we look along this line, this line here. So this is the feasible region, so the points will be along that line. So if you look at along that line, first point is here, we look for whole numbers. So first point is this, which is 30, 0, and what about at this point? At this point, it is non-direct, so we shall look for the one before, which is 27.2 and the one after this corner which is 25.3 then this point also is 0, 08 so what we do we look for the corner point so this was the corner point this was the corner point but for this point you realize that if we first remove this one you realize that this point this intersection is not an integer so what we do that's why we had to look for a point an integer bef after it and also an integer before it that's why this value was there so those are the four points we are going to use so before we go to the next slide let's see how much can be awarded for this slide So M1 for the correct line of this, another M1 for the correct line of this, M1 for shading the region X greater than 0, so shading this one, then this one for shading the region Y greater than 0, or equal to 0, A1 for correct unshaded region, correct unshaded region, this part, and B1 for stating the possible coordinates which are this, 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 that. So now that I have got all those points, let's go and tabulate. First of all, the output is that there are four which are come and put our values in the table. Coordinates we have state all the coordinates we got. First was 30, 0, 27, 2, 25, 3, and 0, 8. So what does that mean? It means that this will come here, therefore we have to put the value. So 2,000 times x, 2,000 times 30 gives me 30,000. 27 times 2,000 gives me 54,000. 25 times 2,000 gives me 50,000. 0 gives me 0. What about the next, for the y, it will be 10,000 y, so 0 times 10,000 gives me 0, 2 times 10,000 gives me 20,000, 3 times 20,000 gives me 30,000, 8 times 10,000 gives me 80,000. So, but remember we have to add, so this plus this, so that will be our output, so this plus that gives me 60,000, this plus this gives me... 74,000. This plus this gives me 80,000. This plus this gives me 80,000. But remember they wanted minimum amount to use so that this is the minimum. Therefore, shall go and look for the corresponding values of x and y. Therefore, shall come and conclude that the investor can use minimum amount of money by buying 30 generators of type A and 9 of type B. So, 30 because x coordinate is 30 and 9 because the y coordinate is 0. So basically that's what they wanted. Now let's see how much can be awarded. So M1 for this output, 
and a one for you to conclude so this was, question was testing linear programming candidates were expected to form inequalities and then represent the, these inequalities on a graph by shading unwanted regions they were also required to find the optimal solution the question was not popular and was poorly done many candidates failed to form required inequalities some got the signs wrong instead of greater than or equal to they would use less or equal to and vice versa and others formed equations instead so others used equal signs instead of inequality representing the inequality on a graph was a problem to many candidates some candidates got the inequalities right and represented them correctly on the graph but ended up shedding wrong regions the majority of candidates failed to get points to use to test the optimal solution so you have to be keen when dealing with a question on linear programming many points are tested i think you see all these ones were challenges to candidates advise that teachers should try to cover all topics including linear programming learners should be encouraged to obtain the corner points which can be used for testing so as to obtain optimal solutions so note that we are using corner points we don't use all the points so because some students may see the very many points but what we are interested in mostly are the corner points because for example here So this is what I mean by corner points, the points which are close to the corner. So in between here, we don't need these points. What we need are the corner points. So that was UNEB 2017 of paper one. So a brief summary is that this paper comprised of two sections a and b section a had 10 compulsory short answer questions while section b had seven extended answer questions and the candidate will answers only five questions the questions are drawn from the topics of algebra equations linear programming matrices two-dimensional geometry transformational geometry and statistics so always remember that each time you are preparing for you name paper one these are the topics to expect the topics which are not here th those will come in paper two but for paper one these are the only and only topics to expect so as you're revising you must revise wisely so that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching and be reminded that the next video will be on your NEP of Math Paper 2 for, three for the year 2017. So if you are not yet subscribed, please click on the subscribe button below this video so that you can receive updates when the next video with this for your NEP Paper 2 has been uploaded. And also, if you know of any student who is not yet on this platform, please share the link of this video with them via social media platforms like facebook and whatsapp so that we can all benefit as a family